sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box on Sunday, the 17th of March, 2013. And we've got what, it's no good. I cannot lie. It's not Sunday the 17th of March at all. It's Wednesday the 20th of March. A little after 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, Sunday show had some technical problems. Um, let me run the titles and I'll explain everything. Okay, so let me try and explain what went wrong and what you're actually watching now is. <laughs> okay, normally when we do a live show, we record that live show locally on our computers here, in our studios. Um, and when the show, when we finish the live broadcast, we then upload that to YouTube and to various places so you can watch the podcast and what have you. Um, that went wrong on Sunday night. Uh, and it was probably user error in this particular case. Um, so only the first five minutes was recorded. So we couldn't, we didn't have anything to upload to the internet for people to watch. There was no catch up. Um, but that's normally not a problem because the streaming provider that we use, they normally record a copy of the show on their server at the same time. And um, so this one time that I forgot to record, or failed to record, should I say, <laughs> the entire show, I initially thought, it's not a problem. I can fetch down the copy off the server and use that. Guess what? Our one and only failure to record a show occurred with the streaming provider. So I spent like Monday and Tuesday talking to their technical guys, trying to see if we could recover anything. And yesterday evening we came to the conclusion that no, it's gone. So that meant there was no Dave's tackle box and we just couldn't allow that to happen. So uh, here I am on Wednesday morning and I'm gonna recreate as much of the show as I can. Now, I need to be completely honest with you guys. The VTs, they're easy. Me, gabbing to the camera, no problem. But we're not going to be able to recreate the interaction with chat uh, and uh, and the discussion I had with Tim, unfortunately. And that's a real shame. I know he'll be disappointed because he bought a new webcam and everything. Um, so this is going to be probably quite a, a little bit shorter show than normal. Um, but I can at least go through the stuff that we covered and, um, and show you the VTs that I'd done as well. So I hope, hopefully you'll forgive me and... Uh, and that will suffice. I hope so. I hope nobody deserts me now. Anyway, so uh, at the right time, if I carry on talking like this, I'll easily fill an hour. <laughs> no, but it might be shorter than an hour, but you know, this is kind of the best we can do at this stage, I think. So the show, I shall refer to this week rather than tonight, because that would just be lies. Okay, so, so this week, we're gonna be taking a look at this thing and 
let's see, because I'm not sitting in my normal place or anything, no, it's all very confusing. Let me take a look at this thing, and this thing is the E-mini, uh, which some people might recognize as the E-roll. It's like a little uh, little uh, SIG-like form function, E-SIG, with a PCC. And uh, I've got a little update on this uh, since uh, we broadcast live on Sunday as well. Um, but I'm going to get the ball rolling with a little VT I prepared about the E-mini, the Oval E-mini, or the E-roll, depending on who you bought it from. Um, so enjoy this. This is the Avali E Mini, uh, which is a what I would call a cigar like form factor electronic cigarette. Cigar like because it's like a cigarette. It's small, it's like it's like a Super King cigarette, really. Um, we're gonna have a closer look at it, but before I do that, I'll point out that you might recognize this as the Joytech E Roll, and it is the Joytech E Roll, but this is the Avali branded version and it was sent along to me to review for you by Avali Ireland. Um, as you can see it works but let's have a look at what you get in the kit and talk about some of the sort of technical specs of this little device. So like all Avali gear the E-mini comes in uh, a lovely sort of presentation box um, with this sort of shrink wrapping on it get rid of that I've obviously already been in this one um, inside you get your E-mini and you get the personal charging case the PCC and yes it looks very like an iPhone just slightly smaller so I'll put the iPhone there just so you can compare the size it's uh, slightly deeper slightly narrower but very reminiscent <laughs> my daughter has a white iPhone I should have borrowed that that's the e-mini itself like I said I've been using this one but it, it arrived pretty much like that but without an atomizer heading but so we'll go through that you get an instruction book two atomizer heads and these are the ego c type atomizer heads and you can see that i haven't opened these i've actually uh, fetched one out of a strip of replacement ellipse or ego c replacement heads you get a couple of spare tanks but i'm using the one that arrived assembled on it and it's fine so far um, this is the European package so I've got the European charger here um, you get a spare battery and in here you get a USB charging lead and that's one thing I do like about the Avali gear is you don't get the flimsy rubbish ones that's that's a pretty good quality well made mini USB to USB charging lead. I've already got one that's permanently plugged into my USB hub over there and I've been charging it with that because there's only so many USB cables you want on your desk. Um, so what I'm going to do is just very quickly talk through how you get this thing up and running. First thing you need to do is charge the PCC. There's no way to directly charge the eSig from your USB hub or your wall socket. Uh, you always charge it through this. Um, connect your USB cable to your powered USB hub or your computer or your wall charger or whatever you normally use. And then the mini USB end goes into this socket at the bottom. Uh, this light will turn on red while it's charging and green when it's charged it's that simple and I'll try and arrange for a shot of that so you can see it shortly to charge your e-sig and you can do this whilst it's charging while the case itself is charging because I've tried that um, this is 
possibly the easiest PCC personal charging case I've ever seen. There's no screw in the battery in, you don't have to remove the atomizer or the cartridge from the ECU, you just put it in. And you can see the little blue light has come on on the bottom there to say that the ECU is charging. That's it. When that blue light goes out, that means your ECU is fully charged. So you've got two LEDs, this one tells you the state of charge of the case itself and this one tells you the, the state of the of the e-cig that's in there. To remove the e-cig from the case when it's charged you just press that button. Now looking at the e-cig itself it comes in basically four parts. You've got uh, this has got juice in it, so it might get a little bit gooey. <laughs> You've got your tank, which contains your juice, and as you can see, this one is about empty. It doesn't hold a lot of juice. You've then got this little cone thing. It doesn't unscrew. It's kind of like a, a bayonet light bulb fitting. You see there's two little dots on the cone and that's where the bayonet fitting goes so you kind of push it in and twist it anti-clockwise as you look at the top and the cone should just pull off he says yeah so I was just being a bit delicate with it there so that's the cone then you've got your Ego C atomizer head like the ones I showed you in the kit so say I've got plenty of these because I use them for the ellipse. And then you've got your battery, which is really, really tiny. The battery itself is a 90 milliamp hour battery. Um, I have found it to be good for about 15 to 20 minutes of continual vaping. Um, I'll comment towards the end on what I've done to try and extend the life of that battery. Uh, but I'll give you a clue, it's using stronger juice. <laughs> um, but to put it together, you take your atomizer head. Again, it's all nicely branded with the Avali logo. And push it into place. Then, as I say, you've got these little dots on the cone there. Line those up with the slots on the battery. Which I hope you can see on that camera just like a light bulb fitting the old-fashioned light bulb fittings you line the dots up with the gaps push the cone into place and turn it to lock it effectively it's really pretty easy to refill it and this one needs a refill uh, use a syringe or a or a juice bottle with a long nozzle this one's particularly good for this kind of thing. And just fill it up. I'm not sure how much it takes. So I should check that shortly. Fill it up. And then keeping that the right way up so you don't leak juice everywhere. Just push it in until it clicks into place. That's it. So that's your putting together and refilling process and then to charge it you should be in there done the charger will recharge uh, a battery from flat about six times before it's it needs charging again itself so you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out that if I can recharge that battery six times Assuming I start with it charged and I can use it for about 20 minutes and that, I think that's probably been a bit generous. If I can use that battery about 20 minutes and I can get seven full charges if I leave the house with a full battery in the morning, um, you've got 140 minutes of vaping. So if you like to continually vape throughout the course of the day, then this probably isn't going to get you through. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Some technical specifications taken straight from the manual. The battery itself is a 90 milliamp hour battery. The charging cone is 1090. 
milliamp hours. So, you know, you're getting towards, you know, uh, one of the, the, the big ego type um, uh, sort of run times, really. So a 1,000 milliamp hour ego battery and one of these, if you keep recharging it from the case, you're going to get similar kind of use. So I think that if you get through a couple of mil a day, it'll last you much more than that. You're going to struggle. Uh, in the kit, showing you everything you've got there, you only get one cone in the kit. So Alex at uh, Avali Island has been very good, actually, and he sent me along an extra cone so I can have two full working kits. Well, that's something to watch out for. Um, as usual, the manual's very good. Tells you everything I've just done. I'm with pictures and it shows you how the thing fits together um, everything you need to know in there precautions avoid frequent removal of the tank cartridge remove it only when the liquid is depleted to recharge it that's good advice otherwise it'll start leaking I uh, have to say I've experienced no leaks in the couple of days I've been using it um, it's been fine but that's about all there is to look at at such a simple little kit um, let's talk about what it's like when you use it so we've got a battery here which in practice I've found has been lasting me for less than half an hour on a charge um, of what I would call continual vaping um, so if I put in my favoured sort of 24 25 milligram strength e-liquid into this i'd be popping it back in the charger somewhere between every 20 to 30 minutes and the charger as we discussed would recharge the battery six times before itself needs charging um that means for somebody like me it's not really viable unless i use a very strong nicotine e-liquid um, I have to say that when I use the 45 milligram stuff that I've spoken about in the past I only use about two mils a day worth of that stuff that's enough um, I develop a vaping pattern that's very like smoking um, so I have to consider that if I were I don't know, working in an office and joining my colleagues on a smoking break or something like that. This would probably get me through the working day. Um, when I'm sitting at home enjoying vaping, um, it's it would be too much hassle. I, the thing would spend more time in the charger than in my hand and the charger would be permanently connected to the USB port. Um, so I think really I've got to agree with the message that was sent to me uh, by Alex over uh, of Ali Island um, he, he said would I be interested in reviewing this for you guys and I said yeah of course I would and he said look this is not for a heavy vapor <laughs> this is uh, a really sort of lightweight electronic cigarette but I do think that if you put the strong enough juice in it uh, if you can, if you sort of, your vaping doesn't exceed a couple of mil of juice every day, this might well be viable for you. Compared to other little super minis that I've tried, uh, using the, the, the Ego C-Type atomizer coil, the, the, the atomizer head, um, with this little tank, it does work, it does wick. Um, I've noticed that it gets a little bit warm if you're really caning in it. And I think that's another another good reason to use a stronger juice in there, so you're not hammering the thing, or it does get a little bit warm uh, around th this cone section. But I think if you're going to use this thing like you smoke a cigarette, <laughs> it's not bad. It really isn't bad. I think many people would agree that the little charging case and the ease of popping the thing into the charging case is a selling point too. I mean that's neat. So to summarise the e-mini 
is not going to replace one of my big 18 650 mods it's just not going to happen um, however I've been managing quite successfully when I've been traveling um, and, and doing stuff where you know I need to develop vapor a little bit stealthier or um, um, where I can't sort of overtly bellow out plumes of vapor I've been managing very well with the ellipse which is only slightly bigger than this so as an alternative for that I'd say this is worth a shot and I think I may well work on some kind of little feature for Dave's tackle box and see how well I can manage with this because uh, I mean let's face it what's not to like there <laughs> it's uh, it's neat it does work provided you're not too heavy a vapor um, that's all I've got to say on the e-mini thanks for watching So that was my sort of initial thoughts on the e-mini and uh, as that was played out live on Sunday night there were a number of questions in chat. I mean uh, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me how uh, a product like this can get so much uh, discussion going. Um, I'm going to play in the first ad break now so I'll be back in about 90 seconds thereabouts. Uh, at which point I'll share some of that stuff with you and I've got a little update as I say uh, since Sunday and of course we've still got to look at the Orion 2.1 Genesis Hybrid uh, so I'll see you right after this Cloud9 Vaping Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box And welcome back okay so as I say uh, there was plenty of sort of discussion in the chat uh, in the chat room that, that we have on the Vapor Trails TV site when these uh, shows go out live um, and unsurprisingly I think given the the, the sort of demographic of our uh, live viewing audience it took a bit of a slating because a 90 milliamp hour battery is not much at all and I think if you are sort of even a sort of medium heavy vapor, then something like this is going to not seem viable. But I've been doing this thing with the ellipse, whereby I've been when I needed something sort of uh, stealthy and um, and you know discreet and small, uh, I've been using the Avali ellipse. Uh, so, so I'm talking about when you're going through airports and on planes and that kind of thing, you know, or maybe in your office if vaping isn't permitted or something like that, you know, sneaky vaping basically. Um, and by using sort of very strong 45 milligram juice, um, I've found that I can, I can contain my vaping to about two milliliters a day. So I kind of uh, sort of uh, played devil's advocate a bit with, with some of the comments in chat. And uh, I, the little update I've got is yesterday, Tuesday, I actually have filmed a diary uh, with me trying to manage for a day with one of these things 
and 45 milligram bite extra juice so uh, and you'll be able to see how I got on with that uh, next Sunday uh, that will be the 24th of March <laughs> uh, on Dave's tackle box and I'll show you how I got on with it um, now at this stage of the show on Sunday I was joined by Tim who was also using uh, an e-roll he had the black one uh, you saw there that I've got the white one and he was very happy with his uh, now Tim like vapes a lot less juice at a lot lower strength than I do uh, but he was having good results with it so uh, if you're interested you see how I got on trying to use it for a day Sunday nine o'clock Dave's tackle box vaportrails.tv is the place to be now unfortunately the discussion that I also had with Tim um, which was actually quite a sort of uh, uh, a lively debate on Sunday uh, concerned the the role of retailers in ECA the uh, consumer the e electronic cigarette consumer association of the UK um, and whether retailers should be involved in promoting it or whether it should be a purely um, a purely consumer driven thing and there were some some really good points and counterpoints on that and I think it would be a little bit sort of uh, disingenuous of me to try and recreate that. Uh, it's very hard to play devil, devil's advocate with yourself. <laughs> uh, so I think, I think what we'll do is we'll resurrect that topic, uh, maybe not this Sunday, but in the near future with Tim, because th there was some definite mileage in that subject. Uh, so apologies to those guys who missed it live last Sunday, uh, but I think to try and recreate that on my own would be, I think it'd look funny, uh, but I don't think it would really much <laughs> contribute a great deal more to the debate that we were having. So uh, I'm afraid that's the bit that we're going to lose in this retake. Sorry. Um, shortly we're going to be taking a look at the Orion 2.1 Genesis Hybrid uh, mod, which uh, is a wonderful thing. But there's a couple of little, other little things that I want to get through before that. Um, the more observant of you may notice that the wall behind me has changed. Now, when I presented the show from sort of studio corner back there on Sunday, it looked quite good, I think. It doesn't look too bad from here, does it? It looks better than it did with all the bullet holes anyway. So um, I'm obviously not sitting in my regular place here. Um, but uh, hopefully you, you approve of that. Um, and please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm not changing it. I'm not changing it. That's wallpaper. And I... I was about to say it took me ages to put up, but that's a lie. And that's why if the camera gets too close, um, you'd see just how poor I am at wallpapering. <laughs> um, another thing that, that was great on Sunday, uh, uh, I've never had this happen before, uh, but uh, I was contacted by a guy called, who goes by the name of Vaporized on UK Vapors Forum and also on forum.vaportrails.tv. Uh, who's organising uh, a, a vape meet. Uh, uh, the South Coast Vapors, which I believe is based roughly around Portsmouth. Now, normally I do the meet roll call thing, uh, but the problem is I've only got one meet to report on this week, and that's this one. And Vaporize contacted me and I said, if I do a trailer, would you show it? And I said, of course. So instead of the meet roll call, watch this.
Now this is the Orion 2.1 Genesis Hybrid Mod. Um, and it's something I've had for some time and just not got around to reviewing. And there's been some reasons for that because it hasn't always been performing particularly well. Um, but last week I decided, I, I, I basically thrashed out a few little issues with it and I decided it was time to film a review of the Orion 2.1. And if I flick cameras seamlessly like that, uh, I can talk to you. <laughs> um, so here's the VT. It's called Orion 2.1. See what you think of this. Hi there, I'm Dave, and this is the Orion 2.1 Genesis Hybrid Mod. Uh, as you can see at the moment, it's quite small. Uh, it's taking an 18350 battery, but it will also take an 18650 battery by adding a little tubular section. Now, I've had this mod for quite a long time, uh, more than six months, and I've used it on and off during that period of time. I have had something of a love-hate relationship with this mod. At times, like at the moment, I'm loving it. It's going really, really well. And that's mostly because of a little bit of, uh, a, little bit of a fix I had to perform on it yesterday, uh, which is going well. So I thought, now is the time to review this mod. Let's take a look at it, and I'll show you what, what irritated me about it for a little while and why I've suddenly started using it again. So this is the Orion in bits. Now, I've dropped it to bits uh, without dismantling the working coil and wick that I had in place, because it was working just the way I liked it. So um, I'm going to show you how it sort of fits together, hopefully without disturbing this wick and coil. <laughs> so fingers crossed for me. Um, that's basically one piece and you get th I got three glass tanks provided um, when I bought mine I think one was fitted on there and the other two were in like a little bubble wrap bag um, to put it together you simply just slide the tank down over the o-rings there's o-rings at the top of this, this thread and here and you just gently slide it on it is glass but you can slide it on like that and that's it so as I say it came with one tank fitted like you can see now and there were two spare tanks in the package and um, somehow the original tank got damaged you can see there's a crack in there I'm not sure uh, it's highly likely that I knocked it over maybe I over tightened the cap I don't know somehow that got cracked so I decided to change it um, it hadn't actually reached the point of leaking but it looked like it probably hadn't got a lot of time left in it before it did so it was at this point that I realized that the tanks are not all exactly the same size they're close, but they're not exactly the same size. So that in itself wouldn't be an issue, except that because the top cap screws onto the device, like that, the, side, the, the, the depth of the tank determines how far you can screw that cap down. Now, the problem with that is that you need to make sure that the air hole here lines up with your wick. And in the two spare tanks that were provided, it didn't. Now, this is a common problem, and it doesn't take longer Googling around to realise what you need to do if the air hole doesn't line up with your wick when you've changed the tank on an Orion. You've basically got two choices. They provide this little O-ring, which you can put over the top threads there 
to adjust how far the top cap will slide down and do it that way. But to be honest with you, that feels like a bit of a hack to me. It's a temporary solution at best. What you actually have to do is sand the tank down. <laughs> a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. So I had a, yesterday on this very desk, I had a piece of wet and dry sandpaper, wet it and just sanded it down, sanded it down until then you put it back together, keep putting the cap on until the air hole lines up with the wick like that. So bit of a pain, but now it's done. It works as it should. Um, before I did it, the experience of using it was not as good as either of my other two Genesis atomizers that I still have. And it's worth pointing out that with these designs, both the Fugazi, there's no thread on the top. So that problem that I've had with the Orion is just totally eradicated. And the same with the UK VA. You can literally just push the top on and then turn so your air hole lines up with the wick inside. You can do that with both of these. But not with this one, you've got to get the sandpaper out. So that's what I did. So I just wanted to have a little moan about that anyway, because um, it took me ages. Because uh, I was very fearful of taking too much off the tank. <laughs> but anyway, so now we've done that. Um, I've got that bit set up. Uh, we've looked at the top cap, and I have to say, this entire mod, uh, the, the steel in it is, it feels bomb proof. I mean, it, it is so, so heavy, uh, and I, I really like that. But you saw the top section there, and the top cap, uh, it's got an integrated mouthpiece, you can't use your own drip tip or anything. Um, I've been using it in 18350 mode. Another interesting point about the Orion is it's positive down. It has to be positive down. Do it the other way up. Apparently you can fry the switch. So make sure you get that right. Uh, that's a bit of a nuisance because it means that even if I use the 18650 extension tube that, that comes with it, uh, I can't use uh, an 18500 or 18490 battery with a kick in there because of the way it's wired up because the positive connection is completed through the steel tube, not the negative as, as is more commonly found. But for now, we'll stick with it in 18350 mode. Uh, the bottom cap, like the rest of the uh, metal components on these are built like a tank. Looking at the, uh, the top section and where all the magic happens there, you can see I've just got a single wick in. Now there is space for a second wick, so you could do a dual wick or U wick setup. But just bear in mind, if you do that, there's no additional hole or anything to fill. <laughs> uh, for me, it's not an issue. I only ever use single wicks, partly through laziness and partly because I just like it. It just works. It, I find it just fine with a single wick, and that leaves the other hole there free to refill. Um, Bear that in mind if you're a bit more adventurous than me and want to try a dual wick or a U wick or something like that. Um, but that empty hole, the way I've got it set up, just allows me to insert juice like that. That's all I've got in this syringe, but it'll be plenty. That wick's plenty moist anyway. The switch, um, it's actually a micro switch, it's not a mechanical switch. And there are a number of comments around the internet about how reliable it is now i think this being the 2.1 version i got one with the upgraded version um the switch is supplied by somebody called palepo who frequents um uh, vapor wall i believe and i honestly don't know whether i've got the new improved one or the original um but i do know that there's uh, whenever I, somebody says to me what's that i say in orion they say oh what's the switch like so um uh, but i have to say i haven't had any problems with the switch on this one but it's probably, if you're thinking of investing in one of these, it's probably worth just uh, asking the question whether it's the, the good switch or not, um, or whether it's one of the problematic ones. Um, i say mine works fine. As you can see there, there's vapour coming off that. That's looking lovely. Mm. Uh, and like I say, 
I'm quite happy with that wick and coil it's doing what I want so I'm just going to drop the top cap back on it and then we'll have a look and see how it performs so I've not bothered there showing people how to how I've made the, the wick and coil because how many times have you seen that already guys and there are people who are far more proficient and know a lot more tricks than I do uh, out there who can show you how to make a decent Genesis coil and this is just a Genesis at, uh, wick and coil setup um, probably should have mentioned that it's Phillips head screws to to uh, to, to retain the negative uh, contact or the positive in fact on this mug because it's the wrong way around uh, and the center post uh, comes with a couple of washers and a nut arrangement um, very like the UK VA that I uh, set up a couple of weeks ago um, works for me quite happy with it um, in terms of how it performs uh, it's a Genesis atomizer it's got quite a tight draw but uh, these, I never get hung up on that kind of detail to be honest with you some people will say oh that's too tight to draw I don't like it um, this has got quite a tight draw very similar to the UK VA's drawer I would say um, whereas the Fugatti I tend to be using that fully open so it's got a very easy draw at the moment and I can just flick between them and I'm happy with either to be honest so, um, but for, for those that care it's a tight draw uh, switch is like I say it's never given me a single issue it's never failed fires every time the sensation you get when your vapes going to be probably more to do with how good your wick and coil setup is and you know how you've you've ticked your own preference boxes with that to be honest uh it performs though um the main claim to fame for the orion for me if i'm honest that, that there are two outstanding points one is the weight if you want something fairly lightweight and you intend to use it in the 18650 mode you're not going to like this uh, it probably weighs about five times as much as the evic for example <laughs> you know with, with with a fagatti genesis atomizer on the top um it's um it's really got some weight in it uh, but i like that especially if i'm using it at my desk because it's a lot less effort to get knocked over and with a glass tank that's probably a good thing um but the main positive claim to fame for me for the orion is the size of it and i just want to uh give you a little example of what i mean there i'm just going to pop the 18650 tube onto it and I might as well stick an 18650 battery in while I'm at it positive down and replace the bottom cap there's so little sort of wasted in, in the design of this uh, I, I don't see the only way I could see you actually achieving a smaller mod that takes an 18650 battery with with a sensible tank size and a Genesis setup on the top is to make the metal thinner <laughs> that's the, it. it really is so compact you saw the 18350 size there I mean I, I'm not a big guy and I can just lose it in my hand uh, even in 18650 mode um, if I compare it okay this has got a Penelope on the top so ignore that but if you look the the hybrid even with its um, top cap and the Genesis atomizer on comes pretty much you know it's not it's not far off the evic on its own before you put an atomizer on the top um, so as I say it's been a bit of a love-hate kind of relationship with me in this mod uh, when the tank was cracked and I couldn't get the new one to line up properly so I couldn't you get the best experience out of it it was annoying me something rotten um, but uh, right now it's working a treat It doesn't give me the flexibility of the UK VA or the uh, Fagatti, um, but it's an all-in-one, it's a hybrid and I like it. The only other hybrid I've owned was the NGP and this is a world apart in terms of 
how robust it is uh, and, and and overall quality I think so um, it, this is one of those devices if you're into Genesis atomizers and you want a hybrid and you want that joined up sleek sort of look I'd I'd say try one of these if you can get hold of one because that isn't easy um, but um, you know it's definitely uh, an acquired taste these kind of things I think uh, but if you were wondering about it hopefully that helped a bit and uh, thanks for watching So that's the Orion 2.1 and like I say, uh, I, I've been using it quite a lot since I uh, sorted that tank out, uh, I've been very pleased with it. I knew it could be a good mod, it just needed me to sit down and sort out that tank so that the air hole lined up. Because if you don't line up the air hole with your wick on a Genesis Atomizer then it's not a great experience frankly, but uh, it's working well now. Uh, except the battery's going <laughs> but that's live that's almost live tv for you anyway it's time for us to take another break uh, i'll see you again in a couple of minutes cloud nine vaping sponsors of dave's tackle box in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Pro sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Now, between uh, when this show should have been recorded on Sunday night and now, which is Wednesday morning, there's been quite a lot of coverage of e-cigs in the media, and uh, th there's been news, put it that way. Um, yesterday, on uh, a, a Channel 5 talk show called The Right Stuff, uh, hosted by Matthew Wright, um, there was some discussion about e-cigs, um, and, you know, I watched it. In actual fact, I filmed part of it because I was watching it while I was doing the evening thing, which I'll be showing next Sunday. So, um, but if you want to uh, sort of hear people's thoughts on that, if you want to get involved in any debate about that, then uh, VT Talk this week, uh, I believe, will be having a, a closer look. Um, more importantly than that, though, um, yesterday afternoon, uh, there was a sort of stakeholders meeting in Brussels um, where representatives of the uh, e-cig industry were able to talk to the Envy Committee, the people who were responsible for the revisions to the Tobacco Products Directory, uh, to discuss the legality and what they saw, where they saw the weaknesses uh, in the Tobacco Products Directive, particularly related to e-cigs. So it's, it's really the first sort of session where people with an interest in e-cigs were able to put their view across. Um, there is uh, a link 
to an mp3 audio recording of that session there was no film as far as i know because it wasn't a public hearing um but they they recorded the audio um and i can provide a link to that um what's the best way to do this i can provide a link to that uh in the youtube description and on the vapor trails tv uh site uh when i eventually assuming it's recorded okay post this video um it's well worth a listen now i know that uh, it's quite short notice for people this this will only be appearing sort of early afternoon uh on on as, on, as a podcast and um and on youtube and VT Talk is tonight, but I know that Dave Dorn is going to be covering this in some detail. It's worth a listen. Um, just so as you know, uh, we had Isita represented there. Um, we had uh, doctors saying their piece. Uh, we had T Vecca, the, the, the trade association, Enjoy, Elites, uh, basically, people involved in our industry. Um, oh, in the industry that, that we hope is going to continue after the Tobacco Products Directive, uh, got their chance to say their bit. Uh, I'm not going to preempt it too much uh, beyond saying that I was left with quite a few concerns. Um, there were a lot. I was a little disappointed in how well their viewpoints were received and, if I'm honest, the way, as an industry, they portrayed themselves. Uh, so if you watch this um, and in time, I recommend that you tune in for VT Talk tonight, Wednesday the 20th of March 2013. Um, in actual fact, I, I believe Dave's toying with the idea of streaming some of that audio before the show goes live. So, you know, if, if you're around, listen from 8 o'clock would be my advice. And if he changes his mind between now and then, don't shoot me. I'm doing my best. <laughs> But, um, but I, I believe the plan is to stream that audio uh, leading on in, in the normal Vapor Trails TV um, way. So on the VaporTrails.tv website and the live broadcast page, uh, just as a bit of background for the discussion that will follow at nine o'clock. Uh, I am going to be riveted to that. Um, as I say, I was a little bit disillusioned. Uh, I listen to the end of that thinking we're doomed but then i regrouped and i thought to myself no this was always going to be a battle to be won by the consumers and uh and so this is the perfect time to remind you write to your mep it's vital we have some support amongst the meps in brussels I don't think we have enough to vote it down so far. Um, use write to them dot com. Key in your postcode. That'll give you a list of the email addresses of all your MEPs. Tell them your story. Tell them what will happen if they ban these things for you. Because I think we're pretty damn close to the last chance saloon here. Uh, there's talk of sort of legal challenges. I don't want nicotine to be off the shelves while things are going through courts. Personally, I think um, and you know, and and a legal challenge is not guaranteed to succeed. I, I'm maybe I'm pessimistic, maybe I'm sceptical, but I see this slipping away from us unless we can persuade MEPs to vote it down. So I'm really sorry in a way that we preaching this message continually on Vapor Trails TV, but this is what we need to do, guys. Um, that about brings me to the end of this show, and it's not far short of an hour. I could probably play a couple of trailers just to beef it out and call it an hour, but I'm not that cheap. <laughs> um, if you've sat through this, uh, I hope it was worthwhile for you. Uh, and worthwhile me doing it. Um, it's been quite nice actually. Not that I'm doing. I'm recording this all in one take, so you know there'll be no sort of post-show editing or anything like that. But it does. It feels a little bit more relaxed. I feel a little bit more comfortable talking to myself. <laughs> um, I'll be back again nine o'clock Sunday night. 
uh, for Dave's Tackle Box. We'll be looking at how I got on trying to use the E-Mini for a whole day uh, without propping it up with big battery mods. Um, but until then, um, thanks for watching. And I mean it more than usual this week. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>